What is up, everybody, and welcome, welcome to another episode of Internet Famous. I am your host, Devalor, and uh, we got a lot of stuff coming up tonight. We're talking Twitter, we're talking TwitchCon, uh, we're talking Game Awards, uh, and yes, everyone's favorite topic. Hang on. Loot boxes. All right, but first, let me introduce my co-host. Um, he's a man who once grass-fed a tiger just to see if it changed the color of its stripes. It's true. It's true. Hey everybody, it's Mike B, aka aka Mike B. Is is like fortune cookie intros? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> This, I just before we get started, I just want to point out this is the most expensive show that we have done so far for me personally, and we'll get to why soon. Okay, interesting, interesting. All right, uh, and joining us tonight is uh, our special guest. Uh, we've got a guy who not only spends far too much time on Reddit, but actually goes there specifically to get into legal arguments. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Ryan Morrison, aka Video Game Attorney. How's it going? Hello. Dude? Good. Yes, it is the worst hobby I think possible, <laughs> but it's my addiction. <laughs> yeah. So how's it going, man? Thanks for uh, thanks for coming on. Good. Thanks for having me. It's uh, always a pleasure to chat, and why yeah. not do it in front of uh, hundreds of people? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people. Hundreds of thousands. <laughs> <laughs> so for the the five people in the audience who don't know who you are, uh, could you give us a uh, a quick rundown uh, what it is you do and and so on? Sure. So despite my uh, quality of my webcam and the basic overall settings, I am a good lawyer with a successful practice. <laughs> and, uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm in the process of moving. And uh, obviously, with everything thrown around, this is kind of my makeshift office right now. But we, uh, we basically run a law firm and a talent agency that specializes in game development and esports. Uh, we do other things here and there. But, uh, we represent a lot of YouTubers. We represent a lot of game developers. We represent a lot of people who play those games professionally. Uh, we represent over half of the Overwatch League, for example, and uh, the players, that is. And then in game developer world, like you said, I went on Reddit when I was a, a newer attorney and saw there was a lot of people there that just did not understand the law and were putting themselves in really bad situations based on the awful legal advice you would get normally on Reddit. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer, but... Yeah, yeah or the, the people who just say they are because it's hard to punish those people. And, hey, I'm a lawyer, and if it's free, it's fair use. No, that's not true. Uh, so a lot of little things like that I was able to go on and basically uh, fix for them and explain to them the reality of the law and the reality of what risks they were taking by putting a game into the public. And uh, it's been a wild ride ever since. I can't, I can't imagine what it's like to be like an actual to be like whenever you get an argument with somebody when you are like when you know the subject matter <laughs> right and you're just like oh yeah yeah like I'll just, I'll just let you finish you know like yeah. I can't imagine what it's like on a stage like reddit where yeah, I mean, it, everybody's it, got some kind of legal understanding the, the problem is if you don't get to the post so I, I wake up every morning to hundreds of of the equivalent of an at on reddit uh, oh, where people God. are mentioning me and saying, you know, here's the law. I'm sure a video game attorney will back this up. And they could be wildly right or wildly wrong. It doesn't matter. They'll still say, come here and, and answer this. And obviously, I don't answer most of those. But I try to pop in when I can, especially when something is so egregiously wrong. Uh, the problem is that if I'm not there in the first hour of that post, there's already a top post that's been up for that hour or hours in some cases that has thousands of upvotes with just absolutely wrong law or absolutely wrong information that is actively hurting people. You know, it's, it's the kind of thing where people will rely on it and then go release their game under the, that idea and then wind up in a lawsuit uh, or wind up just absolutely screwed over. We've seen people lose their houses over it. And then the, the c continuation of that is they lose their wife, lose their kids all because they made a free game and they thought they'd be okay with it. Even some of them are not free games, but it's, it's all a matter of, uh, even the hobbyists out there that are releasing something are putting themselves just as much at risk as if you're releasing a triple A title. The law doesn't care you're an indie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Makes a lot of sense. Um, and we're going to have a lot of, uh, a lot of similar topics that we're discussing here today as well. But, uh, so two things, first of all, Mike, I need to, uh, apologize in advance. Zencaster is failing on me right now. 
and it's not recording at all. So it's not my fault. It's not, it's not my you, fault this time. Click record. I clicked record. I clicked it like five times. It says unable to start a recording. So we have the, the obviously this audio, but the uh, Zencaster is not working for some reason. So okay, rip. I'm starting uh, Shadow Play right now too. So okay, the audio is also okay. seems out of sync. I don't know if that's fixable. <laughs> yeah, with the video. I don't know. Yeah. It's it seems. It seems matched up on my end, but I don't know. We're having weird issues tonight. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> we'll make um, it work. We'll make it work. Um, the other side of things is just a reminder for everyone in chat. We do like to uh, ask you guys at the end of the show for a name for the episode. So uh, if you're in chat right now and you're you're watching watching live, watching this train wreck happen, um, <laughs> just keep it keep keep your keep your brain open for uh, potential names for the episode. So uh, so yeah, we'll ask you for that yeah. a little bit later. So getting right into it, uh, loot boxes, that's a thing people like to talk about. Um, turns out turns out people have some very strong opinions about loot boxes. I had no idea. I had never heard anyone talking about loot boxes at all, anywhere, ever. It's certainly the, uh, the, the of those summons I get on Reddit now, it's certainly the most common one. Uh, <laughs> you know, hey, Germany's doing this law. Hey, you know, Thailand's putting out this law. Is this going to remove loot boxes? Is the internet destroyed? Uh, you know, it's a it's a pretty daily thing. Um, the long story short is loot boxes are a real problem to this industry, whether or not you are a pro loot box or anti loot box. I don't know too many people who are pro loot box, but regardless of where you stand philosophically on the idea of loot boxes, the thing that is happening here is it's inviting politicians to come make laws in the video game industry. And most of our politicians can't open their emails Quite literally, I'm not even being. <laughs> I, I mean, and, and we're asking them now to draft laws on on this industry, and that's begging for really over broad laws that are going to hurt a lot of games, a lot of companies, a lot of fans. And uh, you know, we're begging for that right now by not policing ourselves. Yeah. The ESRB is kind of the ones who are supposed to be doing that. I mean, I, I don't know if you want to get too into the ESRB, but they they sure they. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're they're basically the ESRB. A lot of people think is a government agency. It's not. Right. The ESRB is a private group that basically the video game industry created to say, "Hey guys, don't make laws about this industry. Stop trying to figure out what's offensive and what's not. We will police ourselves. Hmm. We we know this industry better than you. We will make our own rules. That's why we put out that rating system. And when they put out that rating system, everybody was pissed about it. You know, this is too much. This is too, this is crazy. No, it wasn't. It was a really good idea done really well to keep the legislators away from video games. And it worked. I mean, you, you yeah. can see there's very limited laws here. The problem this time is the ESRB is supposed to be this guardian for the video game industry from politicians and from legislators. And uh, they are just not doing that in this case. They, the original statement they put out, uh, and again, I, I'd like to pre preface this by saying I have a lot of respect for the ESRB. I know people who work there, uh, and I really think they overall are great people who do a great job. I think this topic in particular is they understand that if they just say loot boxes aren't okay, then everyone's just going to say, well, fine, we're not going to be part of the ESRB anymore. So they're in a really bad sure. situation where they're supposed to be policing the industry, but the developers themselves see what money they're making, and then they'll just mutiny if the ESRB comes out and says we're anti loot box. Sure. Uh, so just yeah. to just to just to back up for a second real quick just to, to set the set the stage for why we're talking about loot boxes in the first place on this show. Um basically what happened was um people have been saying to the ASRB you need to add a thing to your rating that says it contains loot boxes. And they on, only kind of did that. They basically added something that says that you have in-game purchases in your game, which is obviously very different because in-game purchases can also be things like DLC map packs, it can be things like um, like specifically buying a specific skin rather than something that comes from a loot box or something. Um, and so that's why that sort of kicked up this whole debate. I don't want to say kicked up this debate again because it's it's been going like it hasn't really died out, but it's sort of given it an extra little boost lately um, is the ESRB coming out and saying, all right, we, we've got this this label now. You're going to have to put in-game purchases on your on your um, your rating. But it doesn't differentiate between is it an in-game purchase that's a box that might have something you want in it or is it just directly buying the thing that you want in the actual thing? I, so when I was 22, I had a girlfriend for two and a half years. Uh, 
And I didn't know two and a half years was an anniversary, but she got really upset that I didn't get a gift for, for two and a half years. And uh, it, it actually got into such a fight that it ended the relationship. And I sent her flowers to try to repair it and try to get back together. And she said it was too little, too late. And mm. that's exactly what the ESRB is doing here. Everyone is pissed at them. And they basically <laughs> sent a bouquet of flowers after we've already left. The in-game purchase disclaimer is already in iTunes. It's already in Google Play. It's everywhere. It's a useless tag right now. I mean, it, it, every game has in-app purchases. It's, it's just absolutely meaningless. And I think it's the definition of too little, too late. It, it really is. And it's a shame because their original message here was, was worse. And again, I like these guys. I think they're very good. I think they're just handling this poorly, but they are almost forced to because of the way the industry is. But their original statement was, we don't think loot boxes are gambling. We think they're like baseball cards. That's the opposite of what the ASRB is supposed to be doing. <laughs> they're not supposed to be the defendant of the client here. You know, let the lawyer for the video game company make that argument. Mm. The ASRB is supposed to be thinking worst case scenario. What do the legislators think here? What does the, the public think here? And let's protect against that. And, and I think both these moves are just very obviously not doing that. They're, they're, uh, you can look at all, again, not to only use Reddit, but you, which you should never do. But <laughs> you, know, you can see all the comments there are basically saying this is ridiculous. I mean, everybody already has this on every game. Yeah. Yeah, every game's got some kind of purchase. Uh, right. Or whatever with it. And one of the things that, that – uh, uh, Vance said in her, in her her letter was, additionally, there's no way to cash out in the game. The player can only use the item to customize the gameplay experience. Uh, and having said that, all this other stuff, right? So basically, the, the fact that one of the reasons why they're leaning on, they're, they're going with this very broad uh, label of just saying, yeah, in-game purchases, period, is they don't really feel there's a need to actually delve in any further and further police it because they're saying that there's no way to cash out, which is not true, which is absolutely not true. Yeah, I mean, it's... Get, it's it's not true realistically, and it's also not true legally. So if you, uh, if you, I, I had, I have my own podcast not to plug, but I had someone on no, Mark go for Whipple. It. Plug away. Yeah, it's, it's called Robot Congress every Tuesday. Check it out. But, nice. <laughs> uh, but we had Mark Whipple on recently to talk about loot boxes. Mark Whipple is one of the, the best gambling attorneys I know. He was general counsel to Golden Tee, and he's helped define a lot of the gambling law surrounding video games and gaming in general. Uh, he agrees with me, at least not, not to put words in his mouth and disclaimer, 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 none of this is legal advice. Uh, but it's, we seem to agree on that podcast that even the fact that I can take my account and even if it's a breach of the terms of service, I can take it and sell it to someone else on eBay. That's enough of a cash out under the letter of the law that it, it doesn't matter what protections might be in the game. And then you go even further, you look at the steam marketplace, you look at CSGO Lotto and I mean, CSGO lounge and not a shout out to CS Galato. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> found this great new site, you guys. <laughs> um, no, but, but but really, I mean, in, in any realistic, practical way, if you're explaining this, and I've gone on, you know, I'll be super name droppy about it. I've been on CBS talking about this. I just recorded with NBC news about this. Trying to explain this topic to people who don't play games is impossible. Hmm. Try explaining it to an 80 year old judge who's never even seen a video game and you're not going to be able to. Unfortunately, that's the people who are going to decide these cases and that's who's going to make the law here because the legislation, the actual laws that come down take forever. But case law is a decision by a judge and that's going to happen sooner than later, especially now that this is such a hot topic. And I think we're going to see decisions that make no sense, lack any understanding of what they're talking about. And it's going to be a huge detriment to the industry because we're pretending that it's like baseball cards when it's nothing like that. So just 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 for those of us who are not legal, legally, yeah. so speak legally, <laughs> uh, case law is that when something happens and you refer, instead of referring to a law, oh, you refer to another case that somebody else has judged on that. Yeah, that, yeah exactly. So, so okay, okay. yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, that's exactly right. So if I sue you over something and then the judge makes a decision on it. I, as an attorney, can later cite that decision in future cases. So right. if I successfully sued you, I can say, hey, that guy successfully sued you. Now I can successfully sue this person on the same, the same pretense, even right. though there's no actual law on it. Yeah. It's common. It's, and it's, uh, it's dangerous when it's written by dinosaurs in a courthouse that have never seen a computer. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's actually I, I had a, a sort of sudden crash course in case law relatively recently because... Um, a lot of people watching this will know that I have been spending a lot of time doing Grand Theft Auto RP 
on stream lately um and my character became a police officer and on the family rp which is the server that i play on um they actually have actual police officers who give actual police training to a certain extent obviously um for what you're going to be doing in the game and so a lot of it what it comes down so i this had never even occurred to me that it would even be a thing but so there's a uh, there was a um this is stuff that i had to learn as part of this carol versus united states way back in like prohibition area like the 1920s there was this uh, there was a lawsuit where some police searched someone's vehicle because they thought that he had evidence in uh, in the vehicle to uh, uh, to bad time cat. Go away. <laughs> um, they searched someone's vehicle because they thought that uh, he had evidence that he had he had like uh, uh, prohibition era booze inside of his car, basically. And so they searched his vehicle without a warrant. And there was a lawsuit that came out of that because the the Carol guy was like, no, you should have had a warrant if you were going to search my vehicle. That's my property. If you're going to search my property, you have to have a, a warrant. And the judge basically determined at that point, well, no, because you can move a vehicle. You can't move a building, yeah. but you can move a vehicle. And that's that's it, literally it, the I, distinction. You yeah. And that's what case law is. <laughs> so the Constitution was written. The Constitution is pretty awesome. We we. You know, we were doing really well as a country until a few years ago. Uh, <laughs> and uh, in all seriousness, you know, the Constitution is a finite document written 200 years ago. We can't ask the founders what they meant about something. So the judges come and they they interpret what is meant by the Constitution, what is meant by other laws. Even though you can ask a legislator who made a law this year, what does it mean? That's not how it works. A judge gets to decide what that legislator meant by that law when he's deciding a case on that law. So we that's where the case law comes from. And some of our biggest rights come from cases. You know, we have Miranda rights. Miranda is the name of a case. We have yep. Terry stops that are a big discussion in New York right now. Terry is the name of a case. Mm, yep, you yeah. know, that's all that's all people that brought lawsuits and a judge made a decision. And now we rely on that for society. And it, there's not an actual law on it. Yeah. So it's interesting. I'm proud of myself. I actually know exactly what cases you're referring to. <laughs> so no, you're a good cop. There. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's what we're going to see with loot boxes. We're going to we're, uh, eventually we're going to call it the last name rule. And it's going to be some random last name that got sued or sued. And yeah. uh, that'll be the case law on video games. Yeah. Not good. <laughs> it's fine. It had never yeah. occurred to me that someone's Miranda rights were called your Miranda rights because someone named Miranda sued over it ages ago. Yeah, right. And yeah, Terry Stop is from Terry yeah, yeah. V whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. Ohio, so, I think. So, yeah, I, I, yeah. I totally get what you're Literally. saying. It's like having somebody who's <laughs> too old to even possibly understand like where we're at without sitting through like a two week course on video games and like the history of and where we're at and what kind of practices are, are in play right now. Uh, so, we 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 talked about this. Uh, I think probably related to like CS:GO a lot, or one of the CS:GO like scam sites, right? Uh, we talked about it in relation to that. Um, and you know, one of the things that that I brought up, and, and maybe you could speak better to this because you actually talked to the guy who uh, worked in gambling. Uh, um, but uh, is that once like gambling commissions get involved and they see that there is some kind of practice? I mean, gambling commissions are well established. And usually, obviously, always like really, really strict with how they run things in any kind of gambling environment. Uh, and so if they I feel like if they catch wind of this, couldn't they on a state level make some kind of decisions on what can and cannot be sold from like retail outlets? For sure. So the the C Congress makes laws for the nation and, and the Tenth Amendment basically says states can make their own laws, too. And states have done that with gambling commissions. That's why in all 50 states, you have different gambling laws. That's a huge problem for loot boxes. And it's a huge problem for CSGO gambling websites, because that means when you have a website, you're liable to all 50 states. If I can access your website from my home in my state, I can sue you. And that's why if you go to a legitimate gambling website, it checks your location. And if you're in New York, you can't do it. If you're in Nevada, you can or wherever it's legal. I'm not the gambling expert. Uh, but that said, it's it, we're seeing we're going to see the same with with federal law uh, or with loot boxes. I mean, where they're going to have to comply with the strictest state's law because Overwatch not is not going to say you don't have loot boxes in Florida. If Florida has the strictest, right. they're going to make their rules meet the strictest. Right. And that's what we're going to see happen soon. But the idea that none of these rules apply to us because this isn't gambling is just the wrong bet. I mean, it's I want I wish that was the case. I'm not here as an you know, anti-gambling advocate. I, I lose money on the Jets every year. 
But I, I think that, <laughs> you know, I, I think that pretending this isn't gambling is a huge mistake. Uh, and would I argue it? Could I argue it? Sure. I just, in my core as a, as a lawyer and as a person who understands this stuff, it, it's, it's gambling. I mean, it's, it's really, again, with disclaimer, don't rely on this as legal advice, but I would say it's absolutely a, as close to gambling as you could. Trevor Martin, Pro Syndicate, all those, those you know, terrible people uh, that make enough money that'll definitely hire a hitman on me eventually because I keep repeating this everywhere. Uh, you know, they they uh, would be in jail. I truly believe that if this was a normal gambling website. But because this was Counter-Strike, you saw the FTC come in and just not know what they were looking at. Yeah. And you, you see that with, I was on the phone with the head of the Washington State Gambling Commission. He called me to talk about this stuff. He reached out to me, which was great because that's the only time, you know, we talked to the attorney general office in New York and Florida and elsewhere but this guy was really trying to figure it out and do the right thing. He, he saw that kids were being taken advantage of, and he still is trying to do the right thing. A lot of attorney generals are still building cases on this stuff. Uh, but the, the Washington State Gambling Commission, you know, basically said that his biggest problem right now is just explaining what Counter-Strike is, not even loot boxes, not even that there's a marketplace that's a third part that can be bought and sold on third party websites. Right, yeah. He doesn't even get to that conversation before the people's eyes glaze over. Yeah. So it, it, you know, when when people in our generation, which is going to be soon, we're all getting old, is going to be the next level of legislators and people holding office. I think we're going to see real change in this stuff and real fast change in this stuff. So we have to like uh, hold, hold out on any that's kind of. That's what I wish. Just, just yeah. wait. Just wait until we age try, out. Try 100%. not to try not to let this explode before yeah. the old people die off. off for Thirty something <laughs> years. We're just going to keep on going, man. Exactly. I mean, we had Trump today say that he's going to look into. He's going to mm. have the video game a meeting with the video game industry to talk about making games less violent. I don't know who he thinks he's meeting with. I don't know what that means, but regardless, he's meeting with the entire industry. Yeah, keep your phones open. Like, he might be calling yeah, soon. Yeah, I, but I've, I've, I've got a meeting with him next week. <laughs> the fact that that conversation's even still happening. Do video games make people violent? With all the studies and all the proof that if they don't, in fact, they they can call violence. Uh, the fact that that is where these things are going and that's where this conversation still is shows that we're just not ready to explain to a judge or a legislator what Counter Strike is what steam is as opposed to valve what what wise counter-strike is not the same as dota is not the same as overwatch they all if you get them to understand what loot boxes are they just think that's loot boxes yeah, and unfortunately yeah. what i know that is not in the news cycle but it's it's fact is that the people making these laws and decisions think esports is the same word as loot boxes. <laughs> so every time they talk to me or call me about this stuff, they say, we need to put regulation on esports so kids stop gambling on these loot boxes. Oh, and that's, that's, but, but I'm very serious. I mean, that's the complete thought they have is we oh. need to regulate esports so kids stop gambling on loot boxes. And that is the complete conversation that is widespread among your people holding office right now. And it's it's terrifying. I mean, that's just that that sentence alone shows their complete lack of what's going on here. You see the success of the Overwatch League, and and then you see people wanting to shut it down because kids are gambling on loot boxes on CS:GO Lotto, and they think there's nothing between those two worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah I gotta say, um, when we were when I was setting up this show, I was actually talking with Mike before the show. I was like, I'm gonna get on there, and I'm gonna be all like, No, loot boxes are great. What's wrong with you? I'm waiting people? for it. What's I'm going waiting on? for it. <laughs> uh, but now I'm like. Actually, Ryan, I'm really glad you're here because I was going to say a lot of stupid <laughs> shit. <laughs> when you told me that, I was like, I was like, okay. So, okay. Well, here's the Let thing, me, though. Like, loot boxes aren't intrinsically bad. Right, They're, yeah. You can regulate. What exactly. I wish yeah, the SRB yeah. would do is just come out with rules saying you have to name the percentages yeah. of the chance to win an item in a loot box. That would change the legal structure here so greatly. And the fact that they don't do that, the fact that you you have to you know, buy 700 loot boxes before you get that Symmetra skin in some cases, it's not okay. And that's what needs to change. But it, until the actual statistics are put out and until it's regulated, if you go play roulette on a video screen at a casino, they don't get to make up their own odds. I know everyone right. thinks, oh, the casino rigged this. Yeah. They didn't. I mean, they're very heavily, they're very heavily regulated. regulated. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not. So that's yeah. the difference. Yeah. And that's kind of like, that's kind of the core of what I was going to say. Like personally, Yes, as a consumer, and I, I should throw a disclaimer in here. Obviously, I work for Blizzard Entertainment. I don't work on any titles that have loot boxes, but I do work at Blizzard Entertainment. 
These are my own opinions, not representative of my employer. What are you talking about, man? Box traps. That's a loot box. What? I was no. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you could probably find some way to make some weird argument that because you can use gold to buy... I'm not even going to yep. get into that. Because you, you, you can buy, buy a level 100 character you, you and then pay sell somebody to run you. Back. No, that's... But that's not a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's... <laughs> but how, I'm just so, kidding. Anyway, what I was going to say is... From the development end, I see the benefits of loot boxes because it means revenue comes in, which then can be put into developing the game. And then if it's done responsibly, that development then goes back out into more content for everybody. Um, I don't 100%. know. Yeah, I don't know how Overwatch's development team works. Again, not the team that I work with, but I could easily see how people buying loot boxes turns into we can continue paying our developers turns into now there's another hero that everybody can play that they just get for the $40 that they bought the game for. Um, yeah, 40, 40 to sixty dollars for a video game is nowhere near enough nowadays. And to hmm. keep that the price, loot boxes supplement that. The problem is a lot of people don't have self control and they want one item, or they have a bad night, a bad date, or they come home in a bottle of whiskey and seven hundred loot boxes later they can't pay rent that month. And the fact that it's not regulated and not controlled in any capacity is, you know, it's the same dangers as to why we have gambling laws why people can't so easily lose their house. You can't buy, you can't go to a casino and buy chips with a credit card. You can put in a credit card and buy as many loot boxes as you want. Mm. And until things like that doesn't even need to necessarily change, but probably should, uh, you should have to use a debit card where you can prove you have the money. Mm, that's I see. that's very different mm. than using a credit card where you can go a hundred grand in debt on the roulette yeah. table. The American Express. Whoop. Yeah, it's sort yeah, exactly. of like, it's one of those things where it's like you... Because you can't trust people to be uh, like self to have that self control about it, you kind of have to save them from themselves in some senses. Um, totally, and it's that's it's it's the sort of thing that sounds like like that at my We're core all level. Heart liberals, we are. Well, I mean, it's, sure. that's the- <laughs> <laughs> it's the sort of thing that like I can easily see someone going. Well, it's their own fault that they spent all their money on that. But the right. problem is that it then has con- con- continuing ramifications beyond that. So like. If somebody goes to a casino and goes a hundred grand in debt uh, on their credit card because they spent it all on chips and lost all of them, now they can't make rent. So now that knocks on to the people that they uh, that they're renting from. Now those people, like especially if it's a private renter, but obviously if it's a company as well, like now that's lost income for them. It goes on to their family and so on, and so that the sort of thing. Bad like, for society. Yeah, yeah. The the problem is you don't even need to get that far. I mean, the mm-hmm. fact that I have dropped. $50 on loot boxes in a night because I wanted one skin. That skin, if I used to buy it in Dota, was four bucks. Mm. Now it's 50 bucks. And it's just, you know, that 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 in and of itself probably isn't okay and is probably a little crazy. Uh, but every game's different. You know, in Overwatch, you can't trade the skins. You can't uh, sell the skins third party. In the common sense, you still can legally, which is in the or on. It gets very complicated. You can't legally <laughs> secure the service, yeah. but you can't by legal definition. So yeah. that's that's the problem. But with you know Valve and and in general, it, it's way easier. And Valve yeah. even assigns dollars. It has the use it USD dollar symbol next to it. You can switch that to euros. You can switch that to whatever. It's not okay anywhere, and right. it's unregulated. Even in Europe, which has very loose gambling law, still requires a lot of regulation, and they're. They're not legal in Europe either, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe that's not the case, but I'm an American lawyer. But uh, <laughs> uh, you know, as far as I'm aware, that's that's w- what I believe. Uh, and then Valve goes even a step further to make it, you know, fun. Loop. It's not like you pay five bucks and see what you get. It's spin the wheel, and if you play Dota right now, it'll show you all the skins you can get. And then it literally just goes around all the skins and, and you're like, oh, that one, please. No, no, no. Come on. Big mm. money, big money. And then you get the, <laughs> yeah. the crappy common one. Uh, I almost cursed. I don't know if that's allowed on here. And uh, and and then, you, yeah, <laughs> and then you buy another one and another one and another one just to watch the thing go around until you, you and then eventually you never get the yeah. ultra rare thing you wanted. Yeah. It's it's going to get changed. And whether yeah. we change it as an industry or whether we're begging uh, legislators to do it. I just don't see why we would why we would gamble on that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining. <laughs> All right, I feel like I feel like we could talk about loot boxes for another like six hours, but we do have yeah. other topics that I want to get to tonight. Um, one of which is this new uh, Twitter promote mode that they just released. So in the the ongoing uh, train wreck that is social media, 
Twitter has now at especially Twitter. Twitter has been doing very bad for a long time. They have they have been their business has been in trouble for a long time now. Um, and so we're we're just talking about loot boxes and gambling your money on something. They've mm-hmm. now added this uh, promote mode where you spend basically a hundred bucks a month, ninety nine dollars a month, and what you get out of that is uh, they will. Automatic, I'm quoting here, automatically promote your tweets to your best audience and grow your followers without creating or managing campaigns. And specifically all it does is it says you can reach, it's not, I guess I should say, it's not super specific. They do have some FAQs about it, um, but it's basically they're, they're going to put your tweets in front of more people. Um, they're going to, uh, so like when, you, when you, you're when you scrolling through the on your phone or whatever, you'll see this is a promoted tweet and everyone always goes, show me less like this immediately. But that's that's basically what it is. Um, how do you get so, Mike? You actually, you actually signed up for this. Are you? I are, did. Are you internet famous now? I am not internet famous. <laughs> actually, no, I, take back. I am plus two percent more uh, internet famous according mm. to this. Uh, well, that's reach. That's reach. Uh, so the way it does, the way it works is they have the old system of click on a tweet and then you can promote the tweet. Right. Right. Uh, I don't qual- I can't do that. I can't use that anymore because I have a tweet that it currently exists on my timeline that until I delete it, they will not allow me to promote any other tweets. Uh, and they very specifically pointed it out to me. Uh, it is it, you're not going to it's super dumb. It's my last album uh, has a picture of of one of the models, the picture I took. Right. Mm. Uh, and she's she it's cropped right here. Right. She's she, she, she could be wearing like a tube topper. So you have no idea. Right. It's cropped right here. And it's just the cover of the album. Right. I can't promote any tweets because of that. Right. So I saw this and I was like, hmm, let's 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 try it and see. Yeah, it's 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 a hundred bucks. Don't tell my wife. Uh, it's <laughs> bucks, but I could write it off later or something. And, and plus, I also feel like it'd be kind of a neat experiment to see what, you know, average Joe, you know, Twitter account can do with or can gain or, or lose or whatever. In this case, a hundred bucks uh, you know, in the span of X amount of weeks. Now, I've been you doing it for five days now and so what we'll probably do is like check back on like the fourth week so i'm not obviously not going to continue doing the service uh and i've tweeted 23 times in the past several days and uh they've increased the reach by 2400 uh the promoted reach that they've automatically they just choose every single tweet and they just send it out i guess to whatever they feel is relevant i have gained uh i have gained uh zero followers (laughs) from this service uh and worth if this continues to trend this way it's looking like it's going to be zero by the end of the month as well <laughs> uh so it's 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 definitely not something that if you are a i mean and we'll check back in in a few weeks okay mm. uh because it may start picking up who knows uh, yeah. i have not changed the way i've tweeted i still tweeted the same stuff right same random shit in the middle of the night same whatever during the day um and I'm curious. And so just I'm, I'm kind of doing this in a, so that people who are like me, who, you know, maybe or maybe are building some kind of presence, if they look at this as a service, like, oh, it's 100 bucks, man, it's a lot, but it might help me. I might be able to tell you in a few weeks. Right now, it's looking like no. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking like it's not going to help you at all. Save yourself some money. Uh, but we'll have to check back in. But it is interesting that they're going to take I'm, I can't imagine. I can't imagine some of this shit that I've tweeted in the past few days. That's going to like show up on some random person's tweet because he likes video game related stuff. Yeah. One of your random have, Twitch uh, we, clips. I have like seven different mute buttons I could hit and I definitely hit the wrong one. And I'm sorry, my dog was drinking throughout the entire story. You just told I know that sounded terrible. <laughs> I, actually I thought it was so it's slick. Fine. TLDR, 99 bucks, zero return. <laughs> my so my friend just texted me and said one, I sound like a jerk. So One weekend. <laughs> one weekend. We'll check back in a few weeks and see. But right now yeah. it's looking like it's just, it's a service. It's probably better off uh, for people that have some kind of a business or something or some kind of a product that they're very consistent with selling like or consistent with for me in my case it is very inconsistent you mm-hmm. know it's like between the photography and the music and the games and the random bullshit uh it's it's completely inconsistent but if you were a business uh that like sold cupcakes or something you know it's like okay you're constantly tweeting pictures of like cupcakes or how you make the cupcakes or whatever it's like that might be something that someone that might benefit from this but yeah or that average... show you what demographics you're hitting right now it's not showing anything so the back end, it looks like they built it in a day, right? Uh, it's seriously, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It seriously, it probably did. Uh, it's all it shows is at the daily uh, organic reach 
uh, and then the promoted reach. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. And then it just says tweets promoted and it says 23. Your last last promotable tweet was eight hours ago because everything else since for eight past eight hours has been like retweets or whatever. And they, they obviously don't uh, uh, promote retweets, uh, which I didn't know until I, you know, I started doing the service. But they don't even tell you on a per tweet basis in the back end here. But if I go to uh, if you ever look at your tweet on like you know Twitter app on your phone uh, or even on dot com and you could click on the, the insights view insights. Uh, if I go there, it looks like a promoted tweet. So I'll actually show you on a per tweet basis what your uh, uh who, mm. what your organic reach is versus your promoted reach but it doesn't show anything about demographics or anything uh that i can see here not in the systems they provided it's it's uh those things are always dangerous too so it's in their best interest for this to do well out, out of the gate and i would assume they are targeting the correct demographics and mm-hmm. trying to make you grow the problem with all of these pay for marketing services where you can't see the demographics or can't see where it's going is that they will just shoot your tweet out to a place that doesn't even understand English half the time and they'll just click it and see it and you'll get clicks and views and, and reach, but you're not actually getting anything. And that's what a lot of marketing companies do. We made the mistake of that with, with uh, our talent agency, my Instagram, I still for about a year now, I only get ads for Malaysian fast food. So it's KFC (laughs) and McDonald's. I tweet about it all the time. It's great. But literally the only promoted ads I get on Instagram is Malaysian fast food because we did a sponsored post and it went to Malaysia, and I got so much Malaysian interaction that it thinks I'm in Malaysia. <laughs> That's <laughs> wow. awesome. Yeah. It's interesting. Don't, yeah, don't do it. Don't live yeah, my life. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> it's, uh, don't, don't live your life. Nice. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting, though, looking at this, like, the we're seeing more and more of, uh, like, Facebook has come under a lot of flack recently because of their whole, like, uh, their, their whole algorithm now is built around if you have more than like 10 followers, then you have to give them money in order to get your posts to actually go anywhere. Um, it's something that um, uh, I think it was the Chive recently actually put out this big blog post where they were like, yeah, 1% of our followers see our posts. So we're just going to not post to Facebook anymore because it's a waste of time. Um, and we don't need Facebook basically is what they were saying. Um Twitter and the know. only place with more journalistic integrity than Reddit is the Chive. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, but I, I just thought it was interesting that a site like that, which is basically built around clickbait, was so willing to be like, "No, fuck Facebook. We're not gonna. We're not gonna go there anymore." Um, Twitter, we know, has been having lots of monetary problems for a long time now, um, and like uh, it's interesting. Um, uh, Vero, the the new hotness, which is a, apparently the old hotness, which is apparently has this horrible backstory that we're not gonna get into today, but. Um, they were, they're actually talking about how eventually they want to be a pay to use social media network. And they're going to try and go that route rather than being like, no brands and everything you have to, you have to pay for this stuff. Um, and it, it has a lot of reach into the, the, um, the influencer space as well, or like, um, uh, like streamers, content creators and so on. Because like, if I'm a streamer and I have, like I have, I have like 40,000 followers on Twitter or something. And if I need to pay people to see my going live now tweet, I already get a pretty low amount of actual click through on my go live tweets on Twitter. Um, because most of my, most of my audience on Twitch comes through because they just follow me on Twitch. Right. Um, so when I, when I click that, when I say that I'm going live on, on Twitter, usually most, uh, I, I get very few click through on that basically is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, if that's only going to go to like 10% of my, my followers, then I'm just not even going to bother making that tweet. I'm not going to say like, Oh, I'll I'll, sure. I'll pay money to, to get this to go out in front of more people. I'm just going to not tweet it in the first place. Yeah. I mean, when, when Twitter switched to the, uh, in case you missed it and Mm. you know, what's popular or whatever they did six months ago, everyone Mm. was pissed off because it messed with their timeline. What they didn't realize, which is the real reason they were doing it, is to do exactly what you're talking about, to categorize things by who's giving them money or who's good for Twitter. Uh, For example, my Reddit AMAs, I used to get hundreds of likes on those, and now I get tens of likes on those, and it's because way less people are seeing them. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of, and you can see it. I mean, I I can see my old tweets, and you can see the reach versus the new reach. It's a tenth of what it was, and it's the same follower count. So it's... uh, it's frustrating because Facebook is a useless website at this yeah. point, at least in my mm-hmm. opinion, because of this. It's you scroll and it's a useless meme from your uncle about how Trump's the best person in the world. And then it's a thing that is the chive or something else. It's just a useless 
uh, text on the bottom, text on the uh, text on the top, text on the bottom video, and then you know, cool dad drinking alcohol, and then it's uh, it, it's just nothing. The even the notifications on Facebook nowadays are your friend is going to an event six cities over. Isn't yeah. that cool? Yeah. Like, no, that's not cool. That's not a, that's not a notification. Don't tell me that. Uh, I'm worried Twitter's going the same route because I really value Twitter. I think the, uh, the the I think Twitter is kind of one of the best places for true free speech throughout the world. And uh, it, it's a shame if it goes down the, the, the pit that Facebook did. Uh, but all good things end. And, and Vero is certainly coming out very popularly. Uh, I don't know if they're paying these streamers to want to do it or it's the Google Plus method. Mm. Uh, no one remembers that. But Google Plus, people were begging for invites to because yeah. they, they closed it yeah. off and you had to invite people. People were killing to get on Google Plus, And then they just realized like, Oh, this is just worse Facebook, so we're not going <laughs> to use this. Yeah, I, I feel Vero is probably going to be similar. It, this the market of social media is too saturated, and what's worse is the influencers, the the people like The Rock who have ten billion uh, Instagram and Twitter followers. They don't want to go to a new site and rebuild that audience. It's right. not like you yeah. get a, a one for yeah. one conversion. <laughs> So I think we're pretty cemented in what we have unless they truly mess it up like Snapchat just did. Yeah, well, that's kind of yeah. the thing. Is, yeah, that's another conversation. Yeah, <laughs> I, I actually I really feel like um, I feel like people are ready for a new social media platform because people that we were talking about this uh, last week, actually, um, mm-hmm. with uh, with AJ. Um, but I think. I think we're in a state right now where people are just really, really looking for that next social media network that they can jump onto. And the next thing that's going to come along that they can, uh, you know, get all their friends into and start sharing on there because people people are fed up with Facebook's bullshit. People are fed up with I mean, Facebook, I think, still works fairly well for like if you just want to keep up with like your family from back home or whatever. But uh, for actually like following people that you're like, if you're looking to get the content that people are putting out, Facebook is a bad way to get that content. Um, every time I see side note, every time, just general advice. If you run a Facebook page, don't even bother tweeting that you're going live on Twitch. No oh, one's yeah. going to see that until two days after your stream. <laughs> like <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Um, uh, you know, and we're looking at it as, as marketers and running pages, but you, you have to, why are people there in the first place? Why yeah. are you marketing on Facebook? It's cause it was a really good social media platform. It's not anymore. You can't, yeah. you don't know what your friends are doing. You can't talk to your, your friends. And it's because at some point, Facebook became too convoluted and everyone under 30 left. Mm. And I think that what we're going to see now is is kind of two new social medias where people 16 and under are going to flock to. And then our generation where we're kind of we're the first adults ever that grew up with technology. Mm. So, you know, our parents didn't care about social media. They didn't care about what website they were on. We're the first people in our 30s who are going to say, I want to know what my friend back in New York is doing or my friend in Florida is doing. I want to know this, this and that. I want to stay in touch with these people. That was a foreign thought to our parents. But now we're going to need that. And it's not Facebook. It's not Twitter. And you're absolutely right. Something's going to come out. I just think it's going to be the billion dollar idea when a website realizes they should target that 30 ish year old demographic and not cater to how cool they are with the kids. You know, yeah. it's it's uh, it's two different marketing strategies, and and I haven't really seen that one hit yet. Yeah, at some point, Elon Musk is going to come up with some insane idea, <laughs> and everyone's going to jump on it, um, and that'll be the end of that. Uh, so moving on, um, another thing that I I wanted to talk about on this show, just because I got to participate, um, are actually the the Dice Awards, the uh, the recent uh, most recent gaming awards. To have occurred the 21st annual dice i don't remember what dice stands for it's like um yeah digital and inter- no i have no idea <laughs> yeah there this, there was a game company called digital illusion ce that was called dice but they mm-hmm. i don't think they exist anymore and they're also not this and so the, and even looking at this um they're talking about the academy of interactive arts and sciences and they they bother to indicate that that is what aiaas stands for but they never actually get around to saying what DICE stands for. Site. Yeah. Um, but these it's are one the, of those things like Dota, probably. Yeah. Because Dota does not right. stand for Defense of the Ancients. That's true. It doesn't anymore. It doesn't legally do it anymore because yeah. you guys still own that one, you guys being Blizzard. So it's uh, yeah. so Dota by Valve is just the word Dota. It stands for nothing legally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think they've actually I think they've actually stopped like capitalizing all of it too in a lot of their communications. Yeah. Capital D lowercase Oda. 
<laughs> it's become a word now. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. There's a reason that the C in StarCraft is always capitalized, and it's because uh, otherwise people might think that it's a uh, a motorhome. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see one, I take a picture. Just like uh, oh, that's funny. Yeah, a picture of this. Probably Great, just in case. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so let's, uh, let's just go through some of the, uh, some of the winners here from the, uh, the game awards, the, uh, the game of the year, which they, uh, I did get to vote on and they, uh, it's not really surprising to anyone. They gave game of the year to legend of Zelda breath of the wild. Boo. Boo. <laughs> I don't, it's just, it didn't get me. I'm mm. I know I'm alone on an Island with that. I'm the only one in the world, but yeah, I don't like Zelda. <laughs> Dang! <laughs> Dang. Dang. What do you think, Mike? Yeah. Uh what about uh Breath of the Wild getting it? Yeah. I th- I think I think it's fine. Like, I mean, uh I'm trying to pull up the list of actual like on their own site, they don't have a list. Uh yeah, do you know what the nominees were off the top of your head? Yeah, they don't actually have it here. So I don't remember all of the nominees, but I remember the one that I voted for, which was Horizon <laughs> Zero Dawn. Um <laughs> I, I thought I, played, so I can't say it that yeah. by it by her. That's amazing. I think so. The the problem that Horizon Zero Dawn had was that not as many people played it as Breath of the Wild and a lot of fucking people played Horizon Zero Dawn. So that gives you an idea of how many people played Breath of the Wild. Boy. I mean, it was really hard to put out a Zelda game that was going to appease Zelda fans. And they did. So it's yeah. it's hard to poo poo that. But yeah. I was never a Zelda fan. So that's why I can be poo pooing. Yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't mind that they gave Breath of the Wild game of the year. I do mind that they gave it outstanding achievement in game direction and outstanding achievement in game design, like both of them. And you would kind of think that, yeah, game of the year should be winning categories like that as well. But it's like, I mean, outstanding achievement in game direction versus game. First of all, what's the difference between game direction and game design? I don't (laughs) I work at a game developer and I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Very fair. The person who is in charge of the game design of World of Warcraft, his title is game director. So <laughs> let's think about this here for a second. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like maybe they should have spread the love there a little bit, but maybe that's just because I work in marketing. And so I want to appease as many people as possible at the same time. Right. The other nominations seem to have been uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, like you said, mm-hmm. Hellblade, Uncharted, Lost Legacy, and Cuphead, and Mario Odyssey. So that's actually interesting. I hadn't realized that. So they had basically five open world games and Cuphead. Yeah. On the list. <laughs> yeah. Wait, which category is this? Oh, Game of the Year. Game of the Year, yeah. 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 Oh, I, thought, I thought Player Unknown Battlegrounds was on there, too. Oh, yeah, it, 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 yeah. it is. Okay. I I don't know what it. I don't see Uncharted in the pictures. I see PUBG, okay. and on the list, I don't see. Yeah, Cuphead, PUBG. Horizon Zero Dawn, Player Unknown, uh, Super Mario Odyssey, and Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Cup Cuphead is a great game. Like it's an absolutely fantastic game. It's not. It's not one hundred percent accessible uh, to everybody, which I think is probably one of its biggest downfalls. Which, as somebody who likes the harder games, I feel like that's kind of silly. But I also understand that it's uh, uh, that it's probably one of the reasons why they wouldn't net like a game of the year. Also. Uh, these other games are pretty fantastic. Super Mario Odyssey is amazing. Uh, Breath of the Wild is is also fantastic. Horizon Zero Dawn. I haven't heard anybody that's played it and been like, eh, it's just okay. You know, like, yeah, no, it's everyone's a fantastic been game. like, it's so good. Mm. Yeah, but PUBG was certainly the most popular game, and it, and it changed the whole conversation of gaming for the year. And sure. Cuphead was the first truly unique thing I've seen in a long time in games. So yes, you couldn't really go wrong with this pick. It's a good nominee list, which is rare. So yeah. they they nailed that at least. Um. Mobile game of the year went to Fire Emblem Heroes. That was another one that I got to vote on. Talk about a pay for loot boxes game. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting because the other the other nominees for mobile game of the year were Cat Quest, which obviously was the one that I voted for. <laughs> obviously. Um, but it's also a great game. Um, Goro Goa, which I don't actually know what that is. Splitter Critters, which I also don't actually know what that is. <laughs> it's and, like a fruit ninja, but you like cut up like yeah. cute little critters, maybe. And Monument Valley Two, which yeah, it's a sequel. And yeah, you it's love just kind Monument of, Valley. It, I, it's yeah, like it's I, the cup cut of that list, though, right? I mean, it's yeah. a unique cool idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, my grandmother actually plays it, but she can't get past the first level. But she's so old that that doesn't matter. She thinks she's playing a new game every time. It's adorable. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I swear to oh, you, no. she's been playing the first oh. level of Monument for a year now. That's oh, amazing. No. Uh, but but I mean, on that list, I would give it to Fire Emblem too because it, yes, it's absolutely a pay to win game. But I played it for a long time without paying and still had fun losing. You know, mm. it, it's a well made game. It's mm-hmm. Final Fantasy Tactics level fun. Yeah, uh, handheld game of the year. The one that I voted for did win. And no one should be surprised that I voted for this, which was Metroid Samus Returns. Oh, God. It's yeah. a Metroid game, so obviously. <laughs> um, let's see. Where's the list of the other nominees for handheld game of the year? Weirdly enough, Fire Emblem Her- uh, Echoes was on that. So Fire Emblem got two games in two different categories on here. Um, Monster Hunter Stories. I played the demo. It sucked. Um, Dragon Quest Eight, uh, Etrian Odyssey 5. So it was basically a bunch of RPGs and Metroid. And, I mean, obviously Metroid. Metroid should win every category that it's ever in because it's amazing. Um, I'm trying to look through the list here and see if there's any other ones that you I have voted on. You have the list of winners, on. right? Yeah, yeah, the list of winners. Okay, yeah. I, have, I have a list of nominees. I'm curious. Uh, immersive uh, Reality Game of the Year. They have uh, Echo Arena, uh, Psychonauts, uh, Robo Recall, Space Pirate Trainer, Wilson's Heart. Uh, actually, no, not that one. Immersive Reality Technical Achievement. Yeah. Uh, did Star Trek win that? No. What won that? Lone Echo. Lone Echo, Echo Arena. Yeah, which I Echo haven't Arena. actually heard of. Echo Arena is a uh, it is a first person shooter. I guess it's a VR sh- first person shooter. Mm. Uh, an arena based, but I think it's it was like a sci fi like Quake Arena or something like that. Um, I feel like multiplayer games in VR are really really hard to put on any kind of scale especially in like an award situation, because I could probably fire up this game that clearly won, right? And if I play 10 matches, I probably played five to seven of those with the same people. Like, I can't imagine there's that many people playing this. It's, it's no VR chat. Like, right, VR yeah. chat, yeah, everyone's playing VR chat. But this is like a multiplayer competitive in, a, in, a, in the type of game that makes a lot of people motion sick. So it's, I, I can't, I, I don't understand how... I mean, maybe it's because it's not a vast selection of them. But I thought, like, you know, maybe maybe Bridge, the Bridge Crew would do it because Bridge yeah. Crew was you and a few of your buddies, and you sit down and you play. Yeah, this really, really great. I mean, we, you, we played it, didn't we, Josh? Yeah. And we played, what, yeah. especially talking about technical achievements, it's cross-platform between PlayStation and PC. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just think it's really great that so many games came out that are like game-changing and amazing and revolutionary, and I feel like nothing came out. You know, we're, we're so spoiled now <laughs> as an industry that it's good. Like we're, we're in the golden yeah. age of games for sure. Uh, and it's just, it's just cool to kind of reflect on that. Cause mm-hmm, I truly yeah. look back. I remember being like, man, nothing came out this year, but a lot of really good stuff came out this year. Not yeah. necessarily a lot of PC games, but a lot of really good console games at least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to mention something real quick. Someone was asking in chat, how do they decide who gets to pick, um, who gets to vote? I don't know. But if I was on the list, they must be casting a pretty wide net. <laughs> like, no, just, they go by prettiest person. They have, a, they, have a, they have a list of peer panelists here. Yeah. It says these industry experts comp- comprise an incredible body of accomplishments in all facets of game craft, art, design, blah, blah, blah. Basically, it's it's a jury of your peers. Yeah. Um, and so just there must be a lot this, of people for each category. Insomniac Games, Nintendo, Microsoft, Crystal Dynamics, Warner Brothers, Respawn. So it's kind of like there's a rep from everywhere. I probably find your name on here, Josh. Let me see. Uh, Josh. Oh, this is Josh. Let's see. Oh, oh, hey, hey. oh no. Sorry, dude. Yeah. Does, does, uh, did uh, Destiny Two win anything? Uh, <laughs> oh, I nope. <laughs> don't see it. No. Oh, should we not talk about that? Because of your job. <laughs> Oh right, I forget that. That's kind of funny. Uh, Destiny, Destiny Two is actually in Action Game of the Year, uh, outstanding uh, achievement in yeah, sound got design. Yeah, to a few things. I know it had nominations. Did it win anything? Uh, outstanding achievement online gameplay. The problem the- is all of the categories that it was in. PUBG was also in. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, that was the problem, Josh. Yeah, yeah, that that was it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I also think it's funny just because uh mike you and i were talking about when we were going through this last year in uh on digi who uh mm-hmm. we were talking about how they had best racing slash sports game of the year because yes. they wanted to give it to uh uh to rocket league yeah it's not racing yeah. slash sports game it's back to racing this year it because is. they gave it to they gave it to mario kart 
That's Amazing. so ridiculous. It's like they made that chant <laughs> just, just for Rocket League. Let's just, let's just yeah. give them something. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, can we really call Rocket League a uh, a racing game? Mm, no. Can we really call it a sports game? I guess kind of. What if we change the category? <laughs> if it's racing sports. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Um, yeah, a bunch of other rant. Like, I was happy to see Nier Automata get RPG of the year because it was fantastic. Um, I was I was actually excited to see Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle get strategy simulation game of the year. Same. That, was that so game is good. cool. It's so good. <laughs> and it's like... And it's- it- it scales so far, man. It gets yeah. it starts off it's like super easy. Like, oh, this is great. It's a lot of fun. And then you get to the end of like those secret extra worlds, where they're called like maps. Yeah, those challenge maps. And it's, it's just crazy. like forget it. Like it's it's forget it. Yeah, <laughs> I was really glad to see Hellblade actually get outstanding achievement in character because that's a game that I feel like a lot of people never really found out about. But it's it's really engaging and it's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Cuphead, obviously, getting outstanding achievement in art direction makes a lot of sense because yeah, was, sense. someone finally went, hey, hang on, here's a new art style that's old. Let's use and it. And we haven't seen any copycats, right? <laughs> Not really, Have no. We? No, because it's Not fucking yet. expensive. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's impossible to do, basically, but it, well, it but was we cool. Have, we have seen an endless supply of this game is hand-drawn. Like, every mm. other email I get, if I do a search in my email right now for, in quotes, hand drawn i will come up i have a shirt that i made just so i could buy one for myself that says this shirt is hand drawn it is my <laughs> me actually writing and then scanning my writing this shirt is hand drawn boop right there on the chest nice and it's see everywhere. see how well cuphead did though just by doing something different and new it's yes. it's i wish that would happen more the people it got easier to make games so more people are making games and more people are making games without any creativity cuz it's easier and it's a shame because this is an industry of creative people, and I think that a lot of them have gotten super lazy. And I hope that stops because mm. we do a lot of consults, and I can't tell you how many consults are start with "I'm going to make the next Cuphead." Don't make, <laughs> not, not in particular, but don't make the yeah. next your thing. Like, come yeah. up with a cool idea. It's it's a uh, it's a frustrating part of the job. <laughs> yeah, Who, who's going to make the next PUBG? <laughs> it turns yeah, out eight hundred companies already did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Hizzy just came out with their own. They're like, yeah. hey, we got Auto Royale. It's like, well, wait, you guys were there before PUBG, but I guess you guys are going to just flip it and be yeah. like, hey, we're also doing this Battle Royale thing. Pretty soon. Amazing, wants to by do the way. Do you think that means that there's never going to be a popular Battle Royale game after this year? Or do you like it's just too flooded and everyone's playing different ones? Or do you think one stands out like how there's been other MMOs, but Warcraft just bankrupts them at, after a year? <laughs> I think I think PUBG and uh, Fortnite are going to hold... Like probably for a while. while. I think yeah. I think we're gonna see them basically butt heads. Um, like I, I wish I could name a single game that was able to hold its own against WoW like directly. Like you we know, like, I, I'm a, I'm, so MMOs are my main games, and and I've certainly played WoW since it came out. But mm-hmm. I've tried every other one too throughout the years, and I got super addicted to a couple of them. Uh, Warhammer, uh, <laughs> uh, Star Wars galaxies which is embarrassing and then uh the old republic elder scrolls online like eventually warcraft just says hey that game had three new cool ideas we're gonna do them better yeah. and come back to wow and it works i mean it's i i constantly find myself playing wow again every six months and it's yeah. uh it's my heroine as is a common it's, it's, joke. A, it's that old familiar <laughs> yeah it's that it's, yeah uh, yeah exactly <laughs> and I swear that's not because I'm on your show. That's that's the true, honest thing. Yeah. Like I'm not sucking up to you because you work with Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm actually not really allowed to t- say too much about Wow on this thing, but uh, yeah. So don't. I, yeah. And I shouldn't have brought it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it, but, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, um, I met my some of my best friends on there. It's it's truly like it, that game is just always superior in the genre, and we don't see that with battle royales. I don't think PUBG or Fortnite is gonna be as strong as they are in in a year, even let alone five years. No, sure. It's yeah. a it's a social network is what it is. Like, <laughs> well, right. yeah, to, like, you're right. Yeah. To skirt the line a little bit with WoW, I think part of what keeps it relevant is that it is under constant development and has constantly like new expansions coming out. And sometimes those new expansions make it feel like a whole new game in a lot of ways. Um, it keeps it keeps it fresh. Um, games it's also like cool Fortnite to have a game. and PUBG can do that, but it's a uh, it's WoW was set up in a way to cause that to continually happen. Yeah, it's cool, too, to have a game that can be nostalgic about itself. I mean, mm. the best part of Heroes of the Storm when I play it right now is I get to, like, play for all, you know, like, that's my dude. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, moving on. 
Um, we are just about out of time, but there's a couple things I wanted to hit on. Uh, TwitchCon 2018 was announced. Um, it's in San Jose, so it's not in your city. No, it's not in my city. I'm super annoyed. Like I'll the last two TwitchCons have been, <laughs> the last two TwitchCons have been within driving distance for me, and this one, no, no. How dare they? Be there. <laughs> I, I've spoken at every TwitchCon, but I, I'm not going to make it this year. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's just at the end of too many different things going on. And then it, we uh, we bring our whole law firm to Halloween Horror Nights every year because it's a ridiculous, just absolute shit show and it's fun. Uh, they op- It's like bar carts every two feet after 8 p.m. Uh, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah, it's you physically won't be able to make it. <laughs> no, quite sure. literally, yeah. So <laughs> this TwitchCon this year, I like very sickly drove there because we go to the orlando one too we it's not even like we're in la or anaheim but uh this year i like made it over for my panel and then went right home i i'm not gonna make it to san jose Mm. but i don't know why why do they switch cities every year it's the only con that does that right well and what's weird is they switch cities but they stay in california like a lot of us were talking we thought it was gonna happen in texas we were like oh yeah yeah. this is they'll put it in texas because it's not it's not so far east that it's just completely it's like okay this is a complete like pick up everything and move across the country like it's like texas is there's a lot of conventions that happen in texas and so it's like let's just do it there i thought that was going to be it but i mean i'm thrilled that it's happening here because where it's at is super close so i'm like pumped that it's going to be right here i don't have to get an airbnb or hotel i get his airbnb or just a uh, Uber back to my house <laughs> and go to sleep. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. That's what so I was I'm doing. So I'm moving to the West year. Coast. How far is San Jose from LA? It is about 400 miles. Yeah, it's gonna be about an eight or nine mile drive, or eight, eight or nine hour drive. Eight or nine miles, I could do. No, eight <laughs> or nine hours even isn't that bad compared to what I thought it was. Eight, yeah, well, it's it's eight hours if you if you leave. Well, it depends on which side of LA you're on. Actually, yeah, yeah. so right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, the it's side of like LA that you're on, it'll be it'll be easier for you. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish it was in Austin like, though. Because I Austin, I will always take an excuse to go to. It's it's one of my it's my favorite city I'd never live in. If that makes <laughs> sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, TwitchCon this year. Um. Mike, I'm gonna crash on your couch. <laughs> That's. I mean, it's fine. Uh, it's totally fine. It's right now, I, actually, you're probably gonna come down uh, with uh, Olivia, probably. Yeah, yeah. I gotta, I gotta figure all that out still. Yeah. Um, it depends uh, like that's going to honestly depend a lot on if she's like just working the entire time or something too. Right. Uh, yeah. so we'll figure that out. Um, so that's basically going to wrap it up for today, guys. Thanks so much yeah. for, uh, for being on here. Uh, we are now at the point of the show where we need the chat room to help us name this episode. <laughs> And I don't immediately have a, uh, a an obvious answer for this episode. We've been kind of all over the place on this one. So uh, I'm really curious to see what chat room is going to come up with with name for names for this episode. Um, as soon as Probably we get something related to loot boxes, maybe. Yeah. As soon... <laughs> all right. free legal... Oh, my God. Free legal advice. Because I <laughs> each title, each title is the title of the show with the person that we're on right so free <laughs> legal advice with the video game attorney would be awesome <laughs> yeah. i will be this far. i'm just saying yeah yeah let's 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 not let's not <laughs> make that happen the- please happy 25th anniversary <laughs> <laughs> are memes legal watch this episode to find out <laughs> oh man when you, when, you were talking about, <laughs> when you were talking about people like a, a game developers saying they could get no it's free so i could use whatever i actually got a, an email just the other day uh for a key for a game that used like all of the classic like uh uh like you know black and white four panel style memes right right Right. and it just used those and everything and i was like some of those definitely don't belong (laughs) in like in the realm of free you know and like (laughs) all over this game it's like what are you doing your chat is very creative these are all hilarious (laughs) disclaimer 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 they're pretty good what does dice even stand for (laughs) (laughs) Oh, internet man. famous v morrison that's actually not bad <laughs> did one of us oh, say Zelda? that's pretty good right? <laughs> did one of us say Zelda? <laughs> Zelda. yeah grandma knows nothing about Luke. <laughs> just perpetually playing the first level of the first level monument yeah. valley but she actually does know about loot boxes but not oh, how funny. to play games that's funny <laughs> 
Man, I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I do kind of uh, like Malaysian fast food. Malaysian fast <laughs> food. It's not going to help with your clicks, but it'll be yeah. a good. <laughs> no, it goes up on Mike B's YouTube channel. I don't mind. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm not a lawyer, but. <laughs> oh no yeah yeah just put loot box hero to the tune of jukebox hero mm, mm. Mm. nice <laughs> nice 0.37 percent chance to open legal advice yeah lol man i don't know all right I, it's a tough one. Uh, it's your show, Mike. You got to pick. I kind of, I kind of like. I'm not a lawyer, but because I feel like that's a daily part of, of, of his, of Ryan's uh, like just daily, every day thing. Like yeah. he must do it every single day. But he is a lawyer, <laughs> specific so... to to the yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was kind of funny, but uh, let's see. I kind of, I mean, you, that would allow you to put I anal butt. On your YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean, that is how most comments start. Yeah. I anal, but. I anal. Okay. I anal with video game attorney. Okay, that's it. That's it. All right. That's it. That's the one. I that's anal. My, that's just I anal. Favorite title. I anal. <laughs> Got it. Got it. <laughs> All right. So that is going to wrap us up here today. Mr. Ryan Morrison, video game attorney. Thank you so much for being on the show here today. What do you got Thank coming you for up? Having me. What do you got coming up? I plug away. Don't Go. have much. I'll be at GDC if any of you guys are, so I will buy you a drink. And you can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Ryan Morrison and download Robot Congress Podcast and give us five stars on iTunes or don't even read it. <laughs> there you go. All right, all right. Mr. Mike B, aka aka Mike B, what do you got going on? Uh I'm gonna be doing taxes. That's it. All right. Playing Vermintide, actually. <laughs> now, playing Vermintide, too. I fucking love it, man. It's so good. I'm a little upset that we didn't talk about it today, but this, all this other stuff is so good. Yeah. So, got to pass on it. But, well, yeah, Vermintide 2 is super good. We'll be playing it some more tomorrow. Yeah, we will We will definitely be getting to uh, Vermintide on the show here at some point because yeah. I agree. It's really, really good. Um, I've been your host, Devilor. Uh, you can find me on the internet where I pretend to be a cop sometimes. I <laughs> I am not a I ain't ac- but <laughs> uh, yeah check it out I do things on the internet thanks again so much everybody for being here be sure to follow Mr. Ryan Morrison on Twitter um, be sure to follow me here on twitch.tv slash devilor and be sure to check out VODs on Mr. Mike B's uh, he's over that way uh, YouTube channel youtube.com slash aka Mike B alright thank you again yeah I think I think I'm gonna, I'm just I'm just gonna push the we're done button now. That's what I'm gonna do. Bye. Bye everybody.